smartphone's camera versus human eye. Both your eye and your smartphone's camera have lenses and surfaces sensitive to light. Your iris can control the amount of light getting into the eye. Your lens focuses this light. The retina, a light-sensitive surface at the back of your eye, receives the image. Then it uses optic nerve to send impulses to your brain. And finally, the brain interprets what you see at the moment. In smartphones, light hits the lens surface. A special opening in the lens controls how much light can enter the camera. After that, the light makes it to an image sensor, which is something like the retina in your eye. Interestingly, both the retina and the phone sensor receive upside-down images and then flip them into the right position. Smartphone's accelerometer versus human inner ear There are loop-shaped channels in your inner ear. They contain fluid and tiny hair-like sensors that prevent you from losing balance. Inside these hair cells, there are tiny particles. They monitor the position of your head in relation to motion and gravity. It helps you not to get confused when moving forward and backward in a car or up and down in an elevator. To figure out its location, your smartphone uses an accelerometer, just like your body uses the inner ear. The accelerometer measures such forces as gravity, motion, and vibrations. It also helps your device understand which side is the right side up. Smartphone's processor versus human cortex. The cerebral cortex is the most developed part of your brain. It's in charge of countless processes going on in your body. Your perception, attention, thinking, language, and problem-solving skills, and even the way you communicate with others and move your limbs, all of this is possible thanks to your cortex. But no worries, your smartphone has a processor to do the same things. It's the gadget's central hub. It receives and carries out tons of commands, performing billions of calculations per second. It also controls everything going on in your phone and makes sure it functions correctly. Smartphone's battery versus human stomach. Without energy, you won't be able to function, and neither will your gadget. You get energy from everything you eat. Your body digests food by mixing it with different fluids in your stomach. The carbohydrates from the products you've eaten break down into a kind of sugar called glucose. It gets into your bloodstream and is either used right away for energy or stored to be used later. When your smartphone gets plugged in, it gets its own food, electricity. This starts a chemical reaction within the battery. Once the battery is charged, it stores this chemical energy and gradually turns it into electricity. Smartphone's antivirus versus human immune system. When your body spots outside invaders, for example, bacteria, viruses, or fungi, your immune system springs into action. It hunts these foreign substances and gets rid of them. Your immune system also keeps a record of every single microbe it's ever defeated, in case it has to deal with it again. An antivirus, in turn, scans files, programs, and apps and compares certain codes with the information it has in its database. Some of these codes may be similar to a piece of malware kept in the database. Then the antivirus decides this code is a virus and removes it or quarantines it. The Internet versus Human Speech To make it possible for you to communicate with others, several parts of your brain work together. Some of them help you formulate what you want to say. Others enable you to pronounce words. Most of this speaking-related activity usually happens in the left part of your brain. The internet is also a kind of communication. You send and receive data. The whole process isn't any less complicated. It involves routers, servers, satellites, cell phone towers, radios, your smartphone, and a whole bunch of stuff. Smartphone's compass versus human sense of direction. People have an inbuilt navigation system, and you can thank a part of your brain called the interrhinal cortex for your sense of direction. Place cells, located there, swing into action once you start your way to a particular place. Groups of them immediately form a map of your surroundings. Grid cells are your brain's GPS system. They tell you where you are relative to the place where you started. And the head direction cells begin to work when you're facing a certain direction. Your smartphone's GPS uses radio waves between satellites and a receiver inside your gadget to get the data necessary to find out where you are and what time it is. 
Your phone might also have a sensor called a magnetometer. It measures the direction and strength of magnetic fields. Then your gadget analyzes this information and figures out your location. Smartphone's alarm versus human body clock. Your biological clock is your body's internal alarm that keeps track of time. It tells you when it's time to eat, to sleep, to work harder, and to relax. It's controlled by a group of cells in your brain that react to light and dark. Plus, every cell in your body has a clock of its own and follows a 24-hour cycle. That's why jet lag messes up your biological clock so badly. There's a limit to how much you can readjust your body clock at a time. Your smartphone's alarm is way less complicated than your body clock. You set the time and get woken up exactly when you need it. Or you can choose a special app that will follow your sleep pattern and wake you up in a light stage of sleep. Smartphone's memory card versus human hippocampus. The hippocampus is part of your brain responsible for learning and memories. Thanks to it, you can form short and long-term memories and navigate in space. The hippocampus is also the place where short-term memories turn into long-term ones. When you place a memory card in your smartphone, tiny electrical currents from the gadget move electrons in the flash memory chip. That's how data gets written down. When you erase information, a slightly higher voltage is applied. By the way, an SD card usually can't keep data for longer than 10 years. The data cells on it carry a certain charge that dissipates with time. Smartphone's microphone versus human ear. Your outer ear gathers sound waves and sends them down the ear to your eardrum. It vibrates and sets in motion three teeny bones in the middle ear. This causes the fluid in the inner ear to move. Hair-like cells located there bend and produce electrical impulses. They're sent to the brain that interprets these impulses as sounds. Your smartphone uses a miniature microphone that needs little power to work and doesn't take much space, just like those mini structures in your ear. Sound waves hit the microphone, its diaphragm, a thin piece of plastic, aluminum, or even paper, starts to move back and forth. This vibration gets converted into small electrical currents and then to the audio signal.